John 6, 1 through 21. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. And then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. We're going to say, and women too, even though it doesn't say that. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they had intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. This next section of the reading is uh, titled, Jesus Walks on the Water, and it begins with verse 16. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now, it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. This is the word of the Lord. Um, Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for assisting me. All right, you may be seated. So um, I'm going to wake up my computer here and try not to knock out. You guys know Richard. He has like 80 pairs of reading glasses lying around everywhere. Uh, Here's one of them. I'm going to hope to not not lose those things here. Um, So before I get too much into it, I want to think about, or I want to talk about a a few things that are on my mind and are on my heart, and I just actually spoke with love about one of them a minute ago. We're so lucky in this little church. I mean, look, there are not that many people here, but every single person that is here is amazing and has something unique and different to offer. It may be a beautiful voice like Elizabeth James. It's a very obvious thing, Um, but it might not be such an obvious thing. So, I think of my experience here in this church, and I I really value um, getting to know each one of you and the things that I've learned about you. And so that's really on my heart and on my mind, and I hope that's going to come through in my um, what I say today, even if it's not uh, very overt, I guess I would say. Also, one of the themes of this is kind of our evolution of our relationship with God. And... I, it's fun to look back and, and watch Bob Arns uh, or Mike Shields or Phil, even Richard. I watched a couple of my own uh, sermons on YouTube, as cringy of, a, of an event that was. But I, can, I remember what was on my mind at the time and how differently I think about things now. And that's all part of my faith journey and my evolution as a person. And so I hope that theme will come out as well for each of you as you're thinking about your own experiences. Um, and finally, I guess I would say, uh, when I watched Bob's, uh, the re- I wasn't here last week, but when I watched the recording of his sermon, I was struck by how neatly our, our messages would sort of dovetail in together. So that's something else to kind of be on the lookout and thinking about. So um, last week, just to get right in, Bob, Bob ended with, we all have a little more room uh, for a little more resurrection. We just need to participate. And a word of caution, it may be habit forming. So two quick plugs. One, if you don't know already, we do record these sermons and put them on YouTube. Can you see me over my... <laughs> 
We do record these sermons and put them on YouTube. So if you ever miss a week or something struck you and you didn't take notes, you can always go back and look at them. And the other one is, uh, Bob's in my Sunday school class, and I also see him from time to time in one of Richard's book clubs. If you have not taken the opportunity to get involved with some one of the smaller groups here, like singing in the choir, <laughs> I get the, do I get an A-plus today for your plug? Uh, or uh, joining a Sunday school group or uh, dump club. You'll have to ask Charles Parr about dump club. I would encourage you to, to get to know the other people in this church because honestly, it is one of the most loving, caring, uh, curious, accepting places that I've ever had the great joy to, to be associated with or, or groups that I've ever been associated with. So um, if you haven't yet made use of one of those small groups, I would en encourage you to do that. All right, so enough with the, enough with the PSAs and the, and the plugs. Would you bow your heads for just a moment and, and pray something special with me, please? We praise your abiding guidance, O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. Please open our hearts and minds to you today, and may the words that come out of my mouth be heard by each of us in the way that you intend. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and of our neighbors, and on behalf of your creation and our fellow creatures. Amen. All right, so good morning. It's great to see each of you. This is only my second time back in the sanctuary uh, since COVID. So that's, um, you know, I watch these things on YouTube and, and then we discuss them via Google Meet or Zoom in our Sunday school class. And so it's, it's, very, it's a very different uh, experience to actually be in person. It's so wonderful to get hugs. I hope this stupid Delta variant doesn't uh, prevent us from hugging each other after too much longer. But I'm glad each of you is vaccinated, right? Each of you is vaccinated? Okay, so fingers crossed that things go well there. Mm. Our technology has been a little challenging for me and I think for everyone in our Sunday school class. My, uh, my kid, one of my kids, my younger one, the 14-year-old, is a morning person, so he's generally up and about when I'm trying to, you know, hop onto Sunday school or something. And he'll watch us try to, you know, mute or unmute our microphones or get things synced up so that we don't have a bunch of uh, feedback or, you know, people dropping and trying to join and redrop and write. And he just rolls his eyes and says, old people problems. So that's where I get that from. And it's funny that Bob mentioned that last week in his sermon about forgetting something, or maybe it was a function of his age, because I was sitting there going, I don't think so, Bob. I don't, I don't think that's what that is. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how that struggle is absolutely worth the effort as we try to stay connected with each other. Um, and that's not just during the time of pandemic, that's any time, right? And uh, one of the things I'm very grateful for about the pandemic is how it has forced each of us to figure out some different ways to try to stay connected. And I think that's always a good thing. And I think it's also forced um, some reflection, some, some inner retrospection, and I think that's also a good thing. Um, no, no, I'm pretty good. I'm like, I've said all this stuff without thinking about it too much. This is pretty good. I got notes here and I don't, might not even need them. That's pretty good. I like this. Uh, all right, so let, let's talk about today's reading. The last time I stood here before you, uh, I referenced, I actually referenced this exact reading very briefly because the reading from that time was, uh, a few verses, and then it skipped a chunk, and then there were a few more verses. And I, I said, we're going to skip a couple of pretty good miracles here. And then I continued on with the reading. But today, I get to talk to you about those pretty good miracles, uh, the feeding of the 5,000 and the walking on the water. And of all of the miracles that are recorded in, in the Bible, the feeding of the 5,000 is one of only two that's in all four of the Gospels. So that's a clue to me to stop for just a minute and pay extra close attention. Kind of look at the different ways that they're written about and who includes what and who leaves what out and how brief or long are they. And it's, it's a, it can be a fascinating study. Um, the walking on water one is interesting because a lot of people uh, will sort of skip over that one during this lectionary week. And I think it's really important to bring, to draw attention back to the first miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 to help make a little bit more sense of it in a little different way. 
So the feeding of the 5,000, let's start there. The, a lot of people refer to this as the loaves and the fishes. If you ever grew up and going to Sunday school, no doubt you heard about this one. It's one of the most well-known Bible stories, perhaps because it's repeated four times. Um, so why is this one so important? Is it just a cool magic trick? Is it more of a wow moment? Is it that kind of cool sound bite that you can take away and describe to other people to get them interested? I don't really have a good answer on that. I just know that when I think about it, um, have thought about it over the years, it has tended to mean maybe each of those things, and these days it means a little something different. Scholars and theologians over the years have talked about this particular reading, and they've drawn parallels to uh, the, you know, the, the books of Moses, um, when he's wandering around in the, in the desert looking for meat with the Israelites, or of course the manna from heaven. I think Mike is probably going to talk about that a little bit next week, I'm going to guess. Um, but but the, the real core of this to me is, or, or the way I understand it now, is not just that Jesus is such, can play such an important role in our lives, but then what do we do with that to help other people? And the way I look at this now, this verse, is Jesus talking with the disciples and leading them by example, but questioning them and kind of testing them to see where they are and, uh, and then encouraging them and lifting them to spread the, the spiritual as well as um, physical food. Uh, for the nourishment of people's souls as well as for their bodies. And I think that is, as Christians, that is a responsibility that each of us has. And I'm not talking about the sort of, you know, go knock on a door and uh, drag somebody by the hand of church, although that would be lovely. If you want to do that and help us fill this place up, of course we would love that. But what I really mean is to, you might not even realize you're doing it. You know, like, think of the times in your life when somebody has said something to you mentioned something maybe in an offhand way that has really lifted you up and helped you in some way maybe you saw something a little differently maybe you got curious about something else and went down a, a no, another whole set of rabbit holes um, you might not even realize that you are doing something so important that God has planned for you that he has planted in you as your own unique set of gifts and skills and life experiences and yes, your flaws. <laughs> so that's where I come in. Um, I have often looked to the members of this church that I hold in high esteem. I've been really impressed. You know, Dr. Lambert's uh, some of some of the things that he's delivered, or in the book clubs. You know, I remember a few Sunday school classes. I tried Richard's Sunday school class for a couple of weeks, and I sat in there and I listened to Charles Parr and and Dr. Lambert and Doug Christie, and I just thought, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this. Um, well, I can. It's just my take on the world is a little different than everyone else's. And I want to remind you that each of us is, yes, created in God's image, but God is a kind of a big concept. It would be literally impossible for each of us to embody all of God. That's just not even, like, I can't even conceive of that being possible. But he gave each of us a small, manageable chunk, right? <laughs> and he really wants us to share that chunk that he gave us with everybody else in whatever ways that we can, at least to offer it. Whether somebody takes you up on it, that's a different thing entirely. But don't, don't, um, don't try to be somebody that you're not, I guess I would say. Um, and this reading right here, as well as the walking on water, is one of the things that probably has helped me the most in figuring that out. Um, I used to be very intimidated by other people and very, uh, like I think my first time I was up here I mentioned how I was a type A personality, I had everything all sewn up and buttoned up and I was a hard hitter at work and a go-getter um, and my how things have changed. Um, if you looked at my house right now, it, uh, it's a disaster. Uh, I can't print to my printer. I can't, I like my notes went to sleep and I'm not even going to bother at this point. So y'all, Charles, you keep me on time, okay? Just make sure that we get you out of here in time for lunch. Um, I guess the way that, that I started to understand things the best was when I started to understand that God really did not just 
love me or appreciate me, but intended for me to be as flawed as I am. And that's the bottom line. Once I figured that out, sort of everything else fell into place. So do we have good habits and bad habits? Yes, we do. Um, all of us do, right? Or do we have good traits and bad traits? Yes, we do. But are they really good and bad, or are they really just the things that are unique to us, that God put in us, that we can then use to help other people? If someone else has struggled with being on time, if someone else has struggled with uh, depression, if someone else has struggled with death in the family, if someone else has struggled with a divorce, or the loss of a close friend, or not being the person that they wanted to be, Many of us have experienced at least one of those things, and sometimes more than one. Each of us has been the person that we don't want to be many times in our life, I think. So use those experiences and help reassure other people that they're not bad people. They just maybe aren't being the kind of person that they want to be right then, but they do have it within them. And if they can't see it or when they can't see it, remind them that God still sees it and you still see it too. Um, so I guess those are, uh, those are the main points of what I want to talk to you about today. But I hope in that you can see sort of an evolution in my own growth and my own Christian journey. Uh, I no longer try to have it all together. It's not that I don't care. Yeah, I'd love to be as put together as Doug is or <laughs> as, as uh, scholarly. But, um, but I think that this part of me is very human, and there are some people in this room that need to relate to that human part, that flawed part, that not having it together part. And so, uh, so here I am, and, and this is how the sausage is made on my Sunday morning when I have to stand up here and deliver things. Uh, so I'm gonna go right to kind of the end here. Oh no, it's, I still have time, I could babble on. Not gonna, I'm not gonna do that here. Um, I'm going to go kind of right to the end because the, the really these are the, the highlights, I guess, if I can scroll fast enough. Uh, Bob said when he was talking about Brent Berry last week, what Pop said, stop worrying, bring your complete game, bring the game that only you can bring with your unique skills, only with God in your boat, only... You know, when you see the prospect of Jesus coming at you and he's, he's there to help you examine all your flaws, that can be a pretty scary, daunting process, unless he's in the boat with you. That should give you the courage to face the things that you don't like about yourself and to, to deal with them. Work on them to improve them or accept them or use them to help someone else out. Uh, but bring your whole game. So I think with that, the minimum is the good news, God sees you. If no one else does, if no one else wants your help, if no one else is interested in what you have to say, God still is. Um, and I think when you understand that, then it, it makes you a little bit more okay with your insights. He listens, he understands, he appreciates you, he loves you. Um, and it is helpful though, if somebody in the flesh can help you remember to see yourself from his perspective when you forget that about yourself. So each of you has that responsibility to try to help someone else like that. All right, so um, I, think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna say this. Uh, God creates miracles. He provides each of us with the sustenance that we need if only we invite him in and spend some time with him. You gotta spend some time, that's the key. Be willing to take him into your boat despite your fears or concerns. And I think that you'll find you do have some pretty amazing things to share with other people. Maybe other people wouldn't look at them as remarkable, but I can assure you that they are and someone in this world needs the remarkable things about you even when you can't quite make out who that might be. Uh, if you put him in the boat with you, you're gonna get to that other shore. You're gonna get where you're heading with a lot more joy and with a lot less suffering. And so will you please pray with me just one more time. Redeeming sustainer, visit your people. Pour out your strength and courage upon us that we may hurry to make you welcome, not only in our concern for others, but by serving them generously and faithfully in your name. Amen.
Oh,